It's always something. In the shop today, we have the Kawasaki Brute Force Ultimate Terrain Traction. It's in gear and the battery's hooked up, but bupkis. Nothing on the charge display either. Hmm. Easiest thing first, battery. These are just 12 volt lead acid batteries, nothing special about them. We're going to take our voltmeter, plug it in, and since the charge meter shows nothing, I'm expecting it to be completely dead. A healthy battery will have no problem maintaining well over 12 volts like this one is. Since the battery checks out okay, I've got the white positive wire and the negative black wire hooked up to a known good 12 volt power source. Looks like this was a red herring. Don't fall for it. Nice and crusty. Looks like this was left out in the rain. However, this is not going to cause the motors not to work, so let's go ahead and throw it out and keep troubleshooting. To dig deeper, you just gotta bite the bullet and pull off the bodywork, see what she's hiding underneath. If you don't have a voltmeter, you can also try another known good 12 volt battery like this. This jump box is fully charged. I've got the alligator leads hooked up and you can just tap into where the charge indicator plugged in. Black is negative and white is positive. Well, everything's hooked up and I still got nothing. So it's time to move on to the next most common failure item. Exposure to weather, tall wet grass, overzealous demon spawn. These plastic pedal switches lead a tough life, so check that out next. Best way to rule this little switch out is to take the panel off the underside, which gives you access to the connector and the wiring. The wiring on these switches is pretty simple. I just want to find which one is 12 volts in. I think it's this white one here, uh, but we'll check it for sure. To find out which one is 12 volts in, shove the black lead of your meter into the black pin on the charge indicator connector, then take your red lead here and check each pin. Nothing, nothing, and there's our battery voltage in. So 12 volts is coming from the battery on the white wire, and it's either going to this pin or this pin when the switch is closed. Let's find out. Since you know 12 volts comes in through here, it goes into the switch here, We'll put the meter in continuity mode and check and see where continuity is when we push on the switch between this pin and this or this pin. With the meter hooked up, we can find out which pin is supposed to be closed when the switch is pressed. It ain't that one. Yep, it's that one. But we're not ready to rule out the switch just yet. Take your meter and put it in ohm mode. Any conductor that's gonna be passing a lot of current through it needs to have very low internal resistance or it can cause problems. So we'll test it out. We really want to see something less than half an ohm. And there we have it, 0.4 ohms. That's pretty conclusive that the switch is in good shape. The next step in the circuit is this relay here. When you step on the foot switch, power comes in through this red wire, and when the relay is closed, it goes out through this red wire here. A relay is basically an externally controlled switch. It opens and closes when the power is applied to the coil. This one's naturally closed, except when power is applied to this blue and black wire here. Then it opens up. So what sends power to the coil to open up the relay? Well, these cut wires should be a clue. There's weight switches in each shock tower on this vehicle. So if the kid gets up mid-ride, it kills power to the motors. Safety. I cut it. So this thing should always be closed, so I should have 12 volts in and 12 volts out when I step on the foot switch. Let's check it out. Once again with the ground lead of the meter plugged into the charge indicator connector or any other ground you can find, press on the switch, take the red lead, you can see 12 volts into the relay and we have, hopefully, 12 volts out. So we know the relay and the weight switches weren't the problem, or at least they aren't anymore. If 
Follow the wires downstream and the next thing you'll find is this janky little gear selector. Looks really complicated, but actually it's quite simple and easy to troubleshoot. Should unscrew easy peasy and you'll find there's just two connectors. To unplug it carefully and take it over to the bench for some troubleshooting. These are simple mechanisms, so don't be afraid to take it apart. Just a couple screws. And once you get it open, you can see it's just a lever pushing on two different switches inside here. That's all it is. These switches don't have too many combinations. Power comes in here and here, and in one position, it goes out here and here. In the other position, it comes in here and here and goes out here and here. So we're just going to take the meter, check every combination. All right, back in continuity mode. Continuity here. Let's flip the switch, try all the different combinations. The other switch here is identical, but make sure you use ohm mode on both switches as well. The threshold for continuity isn't really that high. It doesn't take much to set the beeper off. And since there's so much current going through this thing, you really want to see less than half an ohm like we do here, 0.3 ohms. That's pretty good. So if all combinations check out that low, you can rule out your shifter switches as the problem. Here's a quick shot of the default position you should put the switches in before you go to reassemble it. Otherwise, it won't shift right. Last stop, the heart of the beast, the two electric motors. Each one's got a two pin connector here, which you can ohm out. This goes straight to the windings of the motor and you should see between half an ohm and an ohm. Too much means an open circuit in the windings and too little means it's a short. 0.7, perfect. The other motor, 0.6, that's pretty good as well. If you have steady hands, you can also hook up your battery straight to the motor and bypass everything. Just be aware if you touch these together, you'll create a dead short, a lot of sparks, and probably melted leads. That motor's good. We'll check the other one, but I'm sure it's fine. I see these things on the curb all the time because people don't bother to troubleshoot anymore. And no, throwing parts at it shotgun style is not troubleshooting. Hopefully this video helps somebody out. These things are not cheap to replace, but being your kid's hero is priceless. Thanks for watching.